This conference will now be recorded. Very good morning, students. As you know, we have started discussions on the electrostatic part. Here, I I have so many questions, like all basic questions to discuss over here. Topic wise, like today's topic is electric potential, ele equipotential surfaces and relation between field and potential. So on these topics, I'll have numerical as well as analytical questions. And we'll discuss those questions, try to understand the question and answer it. By doing this, what will happen, you know, uh, we'll be strengthening our conceptual understanding regarding these topics, okay? So let us start our discussions for today. Okay, let me change the ink. Yes. So the first question says, as shown in the figure, charges plus Q minus Q and minus Q are placed at vertices BC of an isosceles triangle. The potential at vertex A is C. This is the isosceles triangle. That means, you know, this and this two have same length a and what do you know if you have a potential like uh, if you have a point charge over here and we have to calculate potential at any point p over here which is at r distance away so what will be the expression the expression will be q by 4 pi epsilon naught and r so this is actually the potential at any point at a distance r from a positive charge q if the charge is negative then this will be negative minus okay so at any point suppose you have two charges side by side and you want to calculate at the same distance say you want to calculate the potential at this point due to both the charges so in this case you know uh you have to take the algebraic sum of the potentials because because the potential is actually uh, scalar, scalar quantity okay since potential is a scalar quantity we can take algebraic sum now for the timing let me take this as r1 this is r2 so the net potential at this point p due to these two charges will be like this this is R1 and this is R2 with a minus sign over here. So potential can be negative or positive depending on the charge, depending on the nature of the charge. Okay. And when you want to take the, get the total potential at any point due to multiple charges, you have to just take the algebraic sum of the potentials created by individual charges. So that is the conceptual understanding here. Now you look, this, these charges are same. This distance are also same. If I put R instead of R1 and R2 here, what I'm going to get, let us let us put this to as, see this is B, this doesn't matter much. So this distance is required, okay? So both are actually A and A. So ultimately you will get zero potential. So since these two charges are equal and opposite and they are at same distance from A, if you take the algebraic sum of the potentials, you'll get zero potential. So option two will be the correct answer for this question. All right. We'll go to the next problem. Okay, so this is not a problem. This is an analytical question, but anyway, it is important question at any point on the perpendicular bisector of the line joining two equal and opposite charges. The electric field is zero. 
the electric potential is zero the electric potential decreases with increasing the distance from their midpoint the electric field is the perpendicular is perpendicular to the line of the joining the charges see i'll tell you the question once again see there is you know there are two charges equal and opposite this is a positive charge and this is a negative charge over here q so what does this mean this means that these two are actually forming a dipole okay these two charges equal and opposite charges are forming a dipole now we have been asked that if i have a point on the perpendicular bisector anyhow here okay at the perpendicular bisector what will be the like see what is like what are the options over here see the option says the electric field is going to be zero here no it is not true actually okay electric field is not going to be zero electric potential is going to be zero that is true okay i'll tell you why see see the electric potential for a dipole will be actually p cos theta p cos theta by r square this is proportional to this i think uh, there could be some uh, factor out like uh, here but anyway this varies like the, this okay and what is this theta you know this theta is the angle between this and the axis of the dipole okay or just dipole so dipole has direction like this so this angle is 90 degree so this this angle is actually measured as theta okay the dipole and the orientation the direction of the dipole and the orientation of the point or the position vector of the point the this actually gives the uh yes i'll tell you this you know in your textbook it is there in the textbook you will see, see this kind of point okay so some arbitrary point and look this is this distance is 2d from 2a from each other so this is perpendicular like midpoint say this is a this is a okay and this distance is r all right so here we have seen that potential due to dipole varies as p cos theta by r square and if you if you have this theta 90 degree then potential is going to be zero so that's why it is said that that any point on the perpendicular by perpendicular bisector or equatorial plane of a dipole is going to be zero okay potential at any point on the equatorial point point will be zero okay so the second option will be the correct answer for this question all right now what is the electric potential at a distance ax from the center inside conducting sphere making making oh sorry having a charge q and radius r it is like this this is a conducting sphere okay this is a conducting sphere conducting sphere and you know this is actually this is not a hollow conductor so there will be charge inside that is that is what i can say but obviously the charge will be uh, distributed uniformly you can see it, say that but the, there will be charge inside anyway there will be charge inside now you have been asked to uh, ask what is the potential inside okay so what is the question the question says what is the electric potential the question is what is the electric potential at a distance x from the center inside a conducting sphere having charge q and a radius r okay so 
as i said there will be charge inside okay i'm sorry uh, this is yes so so this is actually uniformly charged conducting sphere it is uniformly charged conducting sphere so what will be the potential at this point okay inside at any point x at any point x what will be the potential suppose this is point from the center it is x distance okay this point p it is at x distance away from the center so what will be the potential at this point p so here one important concept you have to remember that electric field electric field inside a conductor inside a conductor is always zero so electric field inside the conductor is zero so when we know the electric field is zero which is again written as see there is a relation between potential and electric field so i can write this as dv dx is equal to zero that means you know so if derivative of anything is zero that means you know this is constant there is no space variation of the potential there is no space variation of the potential that is what i can say that means you know the, throughout see inside throughout the sphere the potential will be the same okay the potential will be the same throughout the sphere inside but what is the value what is the value of the potential but what is that value of the potential at certain distance x since it is acting as equal potential surface it will be same everywhere inside okay but what is the magnitude that magnitude will be exactly equal to the potential at the surface okay so potential at any point x at any point x will be same as or potential electric potential inside any point will be same as the potential at the surface of the sphere that is q sorry that is capital q q is the total charge capital q by 4 pi epsilon not the radius of the sphere so this is going to be the potential and you look this first option is going to be the correct here i hope you guys have got this answer okay this understanding okay fine now this is again analytical question but this is also a very very important question the question says certain positive charges is given to a conductor the potential then its potential is maximum at the surface is maximum at the center remains same throughout the conductor so the same thing same thing we had already done so as you know the the surface of a conductor sorry a surface of a spherical conductor or see when we just provide a charge so the, there will be equipotential surface okay equipotential surface everywhere up to the surface so the, the potential remains same so even if you add some charge to the conductor conducting sphere positive charge the potential remains the same throughout the conductor okay all right let us go to the next problem okay this problem says potential inside a charged spherical cell okay when i say it is spherical cell 
charged spherical cell it is not said that it is conducting or something when i say a spherical cell then you have to understand that this is something like this you have charge in this region okay in this annular portion annular portion and here there is no charge charge is equal to zero okay this is spherical cell okay so what will be the potential inside okay potential inside a charged spherical cell since since there is no charge over here so what will be the electric field electric field is also going to be zero inside the cell so if electric field is electric field is zero then we have seen that this is again equal to dvdr so dvdr zero means what v is constant so spherical cell the surface inside the spherical cell also will have equipotential okay same potential everywhere so you know that's why the potential inside a charged spherical cell is uniform okay uniform it is not going to change proportional or inversely anything okay it will be an equipotential surface all right now a hollow metal sphere of radius 5 cm is charged such that the potential on the surface is 10 volt the electric field at the center of the sphere will be see the question hollow metal sphere has radius 5 cm it is charged such that the potential on its surface is given what is the electric field at the center you can see this is called this is actually also saying that this is hollow metal sphere so this is where you have to understand whenever there is a hollow spherical cell or hollow metal sphere or whatever hollow whatever hollow is there there is no charge so there will be no electric field inside so in this case also electric field at the center of the sphere will be zero only Okay, now electric field at a distance x from the origin is given like this. Okay, let me write in bigger font. 100 by x square Newton meter square per coulomb. Now I have to find out what the potential difference between two points situated at x is equal to 10 and x is equal to 20. So potential difference I have to find out. So before I find out potential difference, we have to find out what is potential at each point, then take the difference. So what is potential? We know E is equal to dv dx minus, obviously, minus dv dx. So from here, actually, I can find out what is potential. okay so e is already given 100 divided by x squared dx okay so i can actually write this as minus 100 x this plus okay let me do this integration part later so that means you know what you will get so that will be minus 100 over here then minus 2 plus 1 that means minus 1 itself so minus 1 by x okay so this will be this so 100 by 100 by x so this is what i get now let us see the potential so this will be actually see integration you have to do the integration i would have actually written the limit itself here but still let us say x is equal to 20 so this will be 100 by 20 volt this is actually 5 volt
yeah excuse me yeah i'm back so here this is done now you can write this so this is 10 volt so what will be the difference delta v that will be 5 volt only okay so this is the difference so first option will be the correct answer for this question so you need to know the relation between electric field and potential and from there you can actually find out this okay so these are very very simple questions uh, those who, who are doing very advanced questions may not like but anyway these are very very important concepts for the beginners who are just uh, learning the portions okay so we have to actually think for all all the students now this question is very very important you can see from the relation between electric field and potential itself see here a circle of radius r is drawn in a uniform electric field e so this is uniform electric field okay this is uniform electric field I see this figure. Uh, I think this figure has some issue here. Okay, so let me just do one thing. Let me draw the figure itself. Uh, this figure, I'll remove here and I'll draw the figure. Okay, let me read the question once again. The question says, a circle of radius R is drawn in a uniform electric field E as shown in the figure. VA, VB, VC, VD are respectively the potentials at point A, B, C, D. Let me draw the figure. Uh, yeah. See, I have a circle like this. Okay, I have kept this circle in a uniform electric field. See, uniform electric field. Like this. So this is a electric uniform electric field so uniform electric field lines are actually denoted by parallel lines as you know now i have points here point a here here this is the center say and this point is c you can see that this are actually on the same vertical line a and c now you have c d over here and b over here these are also on the same line but on the same horizontal line you can just think this okay now look the options over here va vb vc are the potentials at a b c and d respectively then you have to find out the relation between these potentials look the option first option va is greater than vc then vb uh, equal to VD. Then second option says VA less than VC. VB is equal to VD. That means at the potential. So you have to tell me where the potential will be the same. First of all, where the potential will be the same. See, in this case, you have to understand 
a conceptual understanding you know you have see this relationship do you remember this dvy dx with a minus sign what does this mean this means you know electric field lines will be going from the lower potential to higher potential lower potential okay v lower to v higher so if you take one electric field line okay if you take one electric field line or electric uh, like field line field lines or lines of forces whatever you say it is actually advancing electric field is increasing in the direction where like in the direction in which the electric field is actually uh, sorry potential is decreasing i'm sorry this is actually just opposite i'm sorry this is higher and this is lower so electric field lines will be always going from see higher potential to lower potential i'm sorry this is higher to lower potential okay higher to lower potential if you take a field line so if i if i just draw a field line over here it will be like this so electric field line is actually advancing towards the lower potential towards the lower potential okay so d will be at higher potential and b will be at lower potential that means you know i can write d greater than v d greater than v b or see this this pole okay v b greater than sorry less than v d okay so this part is fine now let us see this a c and the center all see these three points are actually on the same vertical line that means what see this is anyway uniform electric field everywhere field is same say see uniform electric field within uniform electric field that means this regions are actually uniform electric field is uniform okay at this place you know this i'll tell you see if you remember the equipotential lines sorry if you potential surfaces like this if you have equipotential surfaces are actually perpendicular to the electric field equipotential surfaces are perpendicular to the electric field lines so like this so along this line you can see if you take a vertical point vertical lines see vertical lines so each vertical lines will have a constant potential v1 v2 v3 so that means you know at each and every point the potential will be the same v1 so but these two will have potential difference okay so here actually v1 is greater than v2 or greater than v3 like that is goes so what is the summary in this case the summary is that the potential will be same the same vertical line okay so va is equal to vc so va will be is equal to vc on the same vertical line whereas vd will be greater than or i'll write vb is less than vd so if we combine combine these two facts so we get option 3 to be the correct for this question okay so electric field lines goes from higher potential to lower potential that is one concept another concept is that if you draw a vertical line uh, or perpendicular to the field lines you know this line will be having equal potential if you see say actually this is surface say so any surface perpendicular to any particular surface perpendicular to the field lines will have the same potential everywhere or that will be acting as equipotential surface that is what i just wanted to convey all right let us go to the next problem okay this is also very very interesting problem you can see the electric potential and field at a point due to 
point charge are given. See, due to a point charge Q, maybe the electric field and potential at a point at a single potential, single point P. Let us say this distance is R. Here the potential and field both are given. So electric potential and field both are given. What is the potential? Potential is 6 volt. So I can write Q by 4 pi epsilon naught R. Okay. This is actually 600 volt. Okay. At the same point, at the same point, you have q by 4 pi epsilon naught r square as 200 newton per coulomb this is volt per meter i'm sorry this is volt alone okay so these things are given now if you want to find out okay what is their magnitude of the charge magnitude of the point charge should be how much magnitude of the point charge will be how much so you know this is very simple if you see if you this v by e say electric field by volt by voltage by electric field or potential by electric field will be like this e is 4 pi epsilon naught r square by q this q this q this this so you know this is v by e is equal to r so you can find out what is r from here r will be v v is 600 divided by 200 that means this will give you in a sign it so 3 meter okay so in a sign it this is 3 meter Okay, this we have got. Okay, fine. So once we have got this distance r, then why can't we find out the charge? It is very simple now. Look, Q will be, see, I'll just use this equation. Q will be 600 volt into 4 pi epsilon naught r. We know the value of r. We know this value. This value will be actually 9 into 10 to the power 9 in the denominator. Okay, and this is 3 meter. So look this um, 3, 3, this is 2, 200. Okay, so what I'm going to get is 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 Coulomb. That means 0 0.2 micro coulomb. And this option 3 will be the correct answer for this question. Okay, so this was also a very simple question. Now, this question is looking like a little, little, little tricky. Let us see. Two concentric spheres. Two concentric spheres of radius R, small, uh, capital R and small r have similar charges similar charges means nature of the charge is similar that means positive or negative with equal surface charge density both has the same surface charge density okay what is the electric potential at the center common center okay suppose i'm sorry This is on sphere. This is another sphere. Okay, and this is not exactly at the center. Let me try to put this in the center. Okay, I think this is more or less okay. So, this is small r, say, and this is capital R, say. Okay, this is a concentric sphere. Okay. But their charge density is the same, right? So what is the concept of, okay, the equipotential, uh, sorry, uh, the electric potential at the common center, you have to find out, okay? So both are having actually charge surface charge density is say sigma. 
both are having surface charge density sigma okay so if i say that the this one has q1 charge and this has capital q uh, like q2 charge both are having same nature of charges and i can say sigma is or i can write charge q1 is equal to 4 pi this is surface charge density okay so 4 pi small r square into sigma is this q1 and q2 will be 4 pi epsilon naught i'm sorry 4 pi r square capital r square into sigma okay these are the things now i have to find out what is the potential at this common center so i know for a spherical like for a sphere you know the uh at the center the potential at the center and the surface at the same so you know the uh, like potential at the center c say will be q1 by 4 pi epsilon naught this small r small r plus q2 by 4 pi epsilon naught capital r okay and these two will be actually additive now what we know this as 4 pi epsilon naught sorry 4 pi r square it is sigma divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r plus this also will be 4 pi capital r square sigma divided by 4 pi epsilon naught capital r okay so if i do a little bit of simplification over here see this and one r will cancel each other so sigma by epsilon naught will be common from both and here see i have got r and here i have got capital r so this is the answer so the potential at the center will be additive due to both and that is going to be this sigma by epsilon naught whole into r plus r and this option three will be the correct answer for this question okay there could be actually many good questions related to this i'll just take up this kind of questions concentric uh, spheres or spherical cells kind of this question i'll take tomorrow uh, tomorrow there are various type of questions related to this okay so i have got another question this is also interesting question let us see the electric potential at a certain region is expressed as v is equal to 6 s 8x y square plus 6 y z this is in space actually okay in region the magnitude of the force that act on a charge that act on a charge of 2 coulomb is situated at the origin so this is this charge 2 coulomb is situated at the origin now we have to find out the force acting on this magnitude of the force acting on this particular charge anyway so what we have to do here we have to find out see force means a physical to q into e so this is the only way to do so what we have to do we have to find out electric field writing dv dx okay but in this case you know there are other quantities also let me take let me take this minus common so i can write dv dx dv dy plus dv uh yeah so in this case i have to just take 
one thing over here in terms of gradient we have to write so in that case you know so e is equal to grad v minus of grad v okay gradient of v uh sorry this this is not gradient gradient of v is this one gradient of v so what does this gradient mean gradient means i dv dx plus because this is a vector quantity plus j dv dy plus k dv dz okay so in this case we have to take this then you know this these are unit vectors so if i take derivative with respect to x i'm going to get i'm going to get here look this is six alone and here from here i'll get minus a to y and the rest of the things will give you zero when i de take derivative with respect to y i'm going to get here 16 see with this 16 x y x y and yes then i have here plus 6 z okay now i'll take derivative with respect to z so only these two are having z so here i'll get 6 to y minus 8 z now i have to find out electric field electric field at at 0 x equal to y is equal to z equal to 0 at this particular position what is the electric field so wherever there is x so y z etc those two those will be actually giving you zero so you know this is i cap here over here this is j cap over here this is k cap over here so i have got electric field to be minus y i cap so that means in the negative y, negative x axis direction see other things will be zero at the origin okay electric field at the origin see this x is equal to zero y is equal to zero if i put and z is equal to zero then eventually that will be going to be zero now you have to find out what is the magnitude so magnitude of the electric field you know this is okay Okay, somehow I'm going to get trouble over here. This is six, but if I multiply with two, okay, I see. This is uh, then force will be, see force will be Q into E, so minus 12 this, okay. So what is the magnitude? 12 I cap. So 12 will be multi, I, I don't know, somehow, the magnitude, I see, there was 8 over here, 8 Y, so when I take, okay, I have actually missed one thing, I'm sorry, I'll just redo this, let us just take from here itself, look this one, okay. So the ex, ex, when I take derivative with respect to x will be six. Okay, six, and here eight y square. E y. That means I have to take dv dy. So dv dy means you know here you will get minus six x y, and another thing is here. So eight it is. Okay, it is eight and you look this ez 
okay so y here one more thing will be there plus 6z and ez ez means db dz dz so this two will give you zero this also will give you zero so from here it will be v y sorry 6 y and 8 z so now what is the total electric field total electric field is going to be at obviously at origin at x is equal to y is equal to z is equal to zero at origin it is going to be see wherever there is x y and all those two will those will be zero like in this case from this i will get six i cap okay and from here i'll get minus eight j cap and from this actually i'm going to get zero and minus over here okay so i know this is um, 25 i have to find out force i have to write q into e so q into e q is 2 so you know here it is 12 12 i cap and this is plus 16 j cap i don't know whether i am still in trouble these are the things so if i take this uh magnitude of the force will be square root of 12 square plus 16 square i am not very sure whether it is coming I see. Yeah, we are getting. So this will be actually 400. So this is 20 Newton. Okay. So guys, this is the thing you have to do in cool mind uh, without uh, without doing any mistake. Okay. So fourth option will be the correct answer for this question. Okay. Okay, now with the with this, I'll finish this session for today. So this is the last question for today. Let us do it carefully. So what is this question saying? The question is saying that elect, uh, sorry, uh, the variation of potential, variation of potential with distance is given at a given. Okay, you can see that. Okay, variation of potential with distance x from a fixed point is shown in the figure. This is the thing okay so there is a nice variation you can see that okay the electric field at 13 meter okay 13 meter is somewhere here okay so this is 13 meter so what will be the electric field at this particular point so you might be thinking how do i get from this graph electric field see same thing again so this is minus dv dx i have to just take the slope so this is minus slope of v versus x curve this will give you the electric field okay this is nothing but the slope so how do i get slope at 13 13 so what do we have to do we have to take uh, see this is the value these are the values okay i have to take dv dv means you know around this 13 i have to take dv and dx so around this 13 what is dv dv is the change in the potential so final is 20 and initial with a minus sign over here minus sign over here let me do the calculation carefully so slope I'm going to get, see, but minus signs are anyway there. So it is going from, see, 30 to 20. So 20 minus 30 divided by, see this distance, this is 14. Okay, this is 14 and this is 12. So 14 minus 12. So around 13, I have to take. Okay, because 
So these two points, okay, 12 and 14, these two points are also having the same slope as this point 13. That is why we can do that, okay? So this will give you 10 divided by 2. So it is actually going to be 5 volt per meter. Okay, 5 volt per meter. Okay, so option 3 will be the correct answer for this question. So this was also a very simple question if you understand. Okay, so all right with this I'll stop this session for today. We'll meet again tomorrow. Bye for today.